Um, okay. So today we are going to do the next part of the lesson, uh, Curse of Laws. Uh, okay, so I'll start with a small review of the two laws, then we can go to the questions. So in so the first question is, why do we need this law? Why do we need search of law? And like, when do we use it? Anyone? You can type in the chat. So I'm not getting any answers. Okay. Your, can you remember the REQ, the equivalent resistors that we did last time? Yes. So why uh, why did we do that? So when we had complex systems of resistors, when there were like complex systems of resistors, it was hard to just apply Ohm's law, right? It was just hard to apply this directly. So what we did was we found the equivalent resistance. So we converted this circuit into something simple so that we can easily apply this equation to get the current passing through the circuit. So that is why we wanted the REQ, uh, REQ means the equivalent resistance equations. That is why we did this. But there are some circuits which are even complex where you can't find the equivalent resistance just by using uh, the series and the parallel equations. Okay, so there are uh, instances where we can't use these equations because the problem looks complex. The resistance Resistors doesn't fall into either of these categories. So an example is the circuit diagram I have given here. So if you look at this diagram, it is not parallel or in series, right? So, now, so if we take this resistor, let's say we look at this resistor. The voltage difference across this is not the same as the voltage uh, difference across the one kilo ohm resistor, right? So this sort of circuits do not fall into uh, any of these categories. So these are hard to solve. So when we get hard circuits like this, which doesn't fall into any of these categories, we can use Kirchhoff laws. Kirchhoff laws are very general. You can use them in any circuit, okay? in any circuit. With You can even use them in circuits like this where you can easily solve, or you can use them in hard circuits. So these are general laws. So that is the reason we uh, you, you learn these two laws so that you can simplify hard circuits like this. Okay, so now you know why we need the laws. Now let's learn the laws. I'm going to erase all of all the ink here. So the first law is the current law, and we sometimes call it the junction rule. So from the name, we know it is talking about a junction. So in some circuits, we have junctions. So this is a junction, right? These are junctions where the current divides. So, so this rule talks about junction. There are circuits which doesn't have junctions too. For example, uh, let's say you have a circuit like this. No junction, right? So this law is specifically for circuits which has junctions. So what it says is the current at a junction, so if I add all the current, 
coming to this junction, the total should be equal to zero. So I will explain this in more detail. So the law is this. What it says is, if you add all the currents at this junction, the sum will become zero. So let's now see what they are talking about. So in this law, we consider incoming currents. Incoming means currents which are directed towards the junction, okay, which are coming towards the junction. We call them positive currents. Okay, incoming currents are positive. So if current is leaving the junction, so I'll call it outgoing. So if the current is going out of the junction, we call it a negative current. So when we add all the incoming and outgoing, it should give you zero. In other words, what it means is, whatever comes to the junction, should go out, right? That is the only way this will become zero, right? So th that's the only way we know uh, that, it, that is the only way it will become zero. So I will explain you how do we mark currents and all, okay? So let's say, let's take this example for now. Let's say this is I1, this is I2, and this is I3. And this is a junction. So if these two, I1 and I2, are coming towards the junction, right? They are directed towards the junction. So those are positive values. So I1 plus I2, those are positive. I3 is going out of the junction, right? So my I3 is a negative value. So according to the, according to Kirchhoff's junction rule, what it says is the addition of all this, so this plus this minus this, gives you zero. So are you okay up to here? So I will explain it with this diagram in a minute. Are you okay up to here? Yes. If you, if they have given a diagram with like current spot like this, you can write this equation, right? Okay, so the next thing is, what if they give you a diagram like this? They haven't marked any currents, like no current symbols marked anywhere. So how do you mark current? So I will use a different color. So what I usually like to do is, Uh, so I got a question, is this for parallel only? So this is valid for any circuit, okay? It's not parallel or, so if we take this circuit, it's not parallel or series or anything, right? It's just a circuit which has a bunch of elements. So Kirchhoff rules are valid for any circuit, whether it's parallel, series, or it's like this, even if it has this weird combination, it will still valid. So this is a law. It's universal. Valid for any circuit. Okay, so marking currents. So when we mark currents, it is also in, in a, a complex circuit like this, it can be arbitrary. Because we, de we definitely cannot, sometimes we cannot tell the direction of current. For example, let's start from here. So let's start from this battery, okay? So I'm going to start with this because this, is, this one has the higher voltage. This is 10 volts, right? This is 5 volts. So I'm going to just start with this. So if I think current I1 goes from this, so I1 is the current which will go through this resistor also, right? It's the same path. So this whole thing, from here to here. 
It's one path, right? So I one should go along this path. So what will happen at this junction? We don't know. So we don't know. We don't know whether this current will go this way or something is coming from this way. We don't know. So although we can mark up to some point correctly, when we don't know the directions, we can just mark them arbitrarily. Okay. So I can just assume that the current along this will go in this direction. So I can just call it I2. And let's assume that the current will come this way from this junk, from this, um, this resistor, this path. So I'll call it I3. So even if you mark these things the other way in any other direction, it is fine. Okay. So if you have marked the directions wrongly, so if you have, have marked it in the wrong direction, your answers will be negative. So you will get negative currents. Okay. So don't be just don't, don't be scared to just mark currents in any direction you like. Okay. So you can mark any direction you like. And if you do that at the end, once you do the sum, you will get the correct directions for the current. If your direction is correct, let's say if this I2 is correct, you will get a positive value for I2. If I2 was in the wrong direction, if I2 was really going this way, then you will get a negative value. Okay. So I got a question, what battery are we looking at? So I just looked at this battery and started it. But there is like no mass. You, I, you, you could have just put I1 even this way. Okay. Even if you marked it this way, it's fine. But throughout the problem, you have to stick to the current that you have marked. Okay. You can't change this in the middle of the problem. So if you stick, if you mark like this, you have to consider these directions till you finish the problem. So are we okay up to that point? So just mark currents arbitrary. That's it. So I got a question. How do you know I3 is going up? I don't know. So I just marked it this way. Even if you marked it this way, it is fine. Okay. Even if you marked it this way, it's fine. If you marked it this way and if it is correct, you will get a positive value. If it was actually going this way, you will get a negative value. So either way, you will get the correct answers at the end. Okay. So we know how to mark currents. So when we mark currents, we shouldn't be scared. We can arbitrarily mark them. So I got a question. Can you mark them all going away from the junction? So I got a question. Uh, can can I mark them all going away from the junction? Yes. So if that's the case, what I would get is negative I1, negative I2, negative I3, right? If I mark a junction with currents going out of it, then I will get an equation like this, right? So this is also correct. So at the end, you will see that at least one of them will be negative. So you will finally get the correct directions. Okay. So you can mark them any way you like, but you have to write the equations correctly. You can mark them any way you like. Okay. Okay. So just uh, let's look at this junction for now, what I marked here. Okay. So this junction, I'll call it junction number one. So can you tell me the equation for junction number one? So I, uh, I1 is coming towards the junction, right? So I1 is positive. I2 is going away from the junction. So I2 is negative. Again, I3 is coming towards the junction. It's positive. Okay. 
So can you tell me the same thing for junction number two? So this is I2. So I2 is like going this way, right? Mm, I1 is going this way. I3 is this way. So what do you get when you do the same thing for junction number two? So you get I, I2 is coming towards the junction. So I2 is positive. I1 and I3 are going away from the junction, right? Okay. So what can you tell about these two? So if, uh, if they look different, try to uh, take all these terms to other side of the equation in the second one. It's the same thing, right? So if I take all the terms to the other side of the equation, negative ones become positive. So I will get I1 plus I2, uh, sorry, I1 minus I2 plus I3. So what I did was I just changed the, uh, I took all the uh, values to the other side of the equation. So can you see that these two equations are identical? Junction one and junction two. Yes, they are identical. So because of that, we usually write only one equation for every pair of junctions. So for two junctions, we just write one equation. So we don't write the equation for both the junctions because the junctions are identical. Okay. So if we have two junctions in a circuit, we will write only one equation for the junction. If we have four junctions, we would write two equations. So for every pair of junctions, we will just write one equation because we know all the time the uh, any two that two junctions will be the same. So are we okay with this? Yeah. Okay. So this is the easiest look. You just look at the uh, current, whether it's coming to the junction or going out of the junction, and write it. Oops. Okay. So let me clear all of this. So this is my summary, okay? This is summary of junction rule. Something coming into the junction is positive. Something leaving the junction is negative. And one equation for a pair of junctions. Okay, so now let's move to the hard one. So this is the hard one and it's not really hard, but a lot of people get confused in this law. So the voltage law is very similar to the current law. What it says is, if you sum up all the voltages, voltages means potential differences. If you sum up all the potential differences in a closed loop, you will get zero. When you add the voltage across this uh, battery and the voltage across these two resistors, you will you should end up getting zero. That is what it is saying. So can you tell me what is what conservation is this? The previous one was uh, charge conservation, right? What conservation is this? Yes, it is energy conservation. Why? So what is potential, potential difference, potential is something to do with energy, right? Potential energy, potential. So whatever the energy given out by the battery is consumed by the resistors. So it is something like that. 
So this rule is made up, made from conservation of energy. So you need to remember this because they might ask you these in conceptual problems. Okay. So, so we know we have to add the voltages, but before that we have to know how to add them. So let's first look at batteries. What could we do when we find a battery in the circuit? So well, the first step in voltage law is when you have a circuit, you have to go around a loop to write this Kirchhoff law. So this is defined for a loop, right? It is defined for a closed loop. So in this circuit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around this circuit like this. I'm going to start from some point and come to the same point from here to here. So this is a closed loop, right? So when I'm going around this circuit, I can go either in clockwise direction or counterclockwise direction, right? So here I can go like this in the clockwise direction or someone might choose to go the other way. So you, you have the uh, uh, freedom to choose whichever direction you like to go which is it is called the direction of the loop or sometimes we call it the di uh, traverse direction direction that we traverse around this loop okay usually okay usually our life is easy when we go along the current so here our current is going in the clockwise direction right current is flowing clockwise so if we select our loop also in the clockwise direction, it'll, it'll make our life easy. But sometimes we will be forced to take different uh, loops depending on the problem. Okay, so we will see different problems when you go to the next, next part. But for now, let's see what will happen. So here, Assume that we have a battery. So I'm going to draw two batteries. I'm going to, because I'm going to talk about so two scenarios. The first scenario is when my mm, the scenario is when my uh, Traverse direction, so this is my traverse or the loop, the direction I move through the loop is like this with the battery. What I mean by like this, so this is positive terminal and this is the negative terminal. So the other thing that I'm going to consider is this. This is the direction I'm going to move. And my battery is like this. So what is my voltage? What is my voltage if I move this way? And what is my voltage if I move this way? That is the question. So we know in a battery, positive terminal, so this is my positive side, this is my negative side. This has higher potential, right? So when I go from here to here, I'm going to a higher potential. That means my potential difference is a positive value. Okay. So in the second example, I'm going from here to here, right? My traverse or the loop direction is 
this way. So I'm going from a higher potential to a lower potential. So if that is the case, my voltage is a negative voltage. I'm my voltage is dropping. So that is the physics behind it. But we need an easy way to remember it, right? If you listen to the lecture, they went through an easy way. They taught you an easy way. What is the easy way? So when you are travel, so you travel. So this is the direction. So in the first one, this is the direction you traverse. You look at the last terminal you pass. So when you go this way, what is the last terminal you pass? Positive terminal, right? You pass the positive terminal at last, so your voltage is a positive value. So when you, if you, if we apply the same thing, when you go this way, this is the last terminal you passed, right? That means your voltage is a negative voltage. So are you okay with the battery? Yes. So if your loop is this way, this is positive. If your loop is like this with the battery, like in the second one, it is negative. So, so make sure you have this like drawn or some, like when you do problems, have this on a side of the paper, like keep it drawn at one end of the paper. So it will be less confusing to do problems. And the important thing is this voltage across a battery does not depend on the direction of current. So I didn't even draw current in these examples, right? So no matter which direction your current flows, for this voltage, for the voltage across a battery, it doesn't matter. It is always the positive terminal side has a higher potential than the negative. Okay. So a lot of people, when I go to the next problem, they will ask me, current is flowing this way, why did you put a negative value for voltage? The voltage and this current here, they are not related. Okay. So we don't even look at the current when we look at a battery. In curse of law. So are we okay with this part? Do you know how to put positive or negative values? Yes. And it is this. So the next part it is resistors. So there are only two types of elements you will pass when you are going through a loop, right? One is a ba one is batteries, other one is resistors. So we know what to do with batteries now. Now let's see what we should do with resistors. So I'm going to do two scenarios just like the previous one. Let's assume my current is flowing this way. So in the first example, I'm going to go. This is my direction of the loop. Loop over traverse. In the second example, I'm going to go this way. So those are the two scenarios that we will see when we do problems. Either we will go along the current or we will go opposite to the current, right? Those are the only two options. So the voltage drop across resistors depends on the direction of current, not like the battery. Okay. 
that depends on the direction of current. Okay, so let's look at the first example. Can you tell me what will happen to the potential when we go from here to here? So current is flowing this way, right? Current is flowing towards the right direction. We know current always flows from high to low, right? High to low. So voltage is dropping, you know, through a resistor voltage drops. So when we go from here to here, here to here, we know voltage drops. Therefore, when the current and your traverse directions are the same, it is a voltage drop. It's a negative value, negative current times the resistance, negative IR. So you all, you all know that through a resistor voltage drops. That's good. What is happening here? So here I'm moving from here to here, right? This way, I'm moving towards left, left side. So the potential here was high, right? The potential here is higher than this low potential. The current flows from high to low. So if you're going in the opposite direction, it is a lift in voltage, right? It's, a, it's not a drop. So here the voltage is a plus value because you're going in the opposite direction. Okay. So these four things, four things means the two scenarios we talked about in batteries. And these two cases about resistors are the most important things in this law. If you know this really well, you can do any problem in Kirchhoff law. Okay. So when your I and traverse directions are the same, through a resistor, your voltage is negative. It is a drop. When current and the traverse directions are opposite, it is a positive value. So write this, this, this summary like thing down, this thing, and tell me when you are done. And once you're done, we will do this simple problem first, just to make sure that we understand it. A simple circuit which we can even do without curse of law, but we'll use curse of law for now. Okay, so I'm going, so this is my loop. Loop means I have decided which direction I'm going to move. So here I'm going to move along the current, right? In the same direction as my current. So usually in a curse of law problems, I like to start with a battery. So I like to start with, with a position like this. So I like to take care of the voltage term first before going into resistors. So you, so you can choose whatever you like. You can choose any position you like to start in. So I'm going to start from here. Because this is a loop, I should start from here and go around the circuit and come back here, right? It is a closed loop. So my first circuit element is the battery because I'm going this way. So what can you say about the voltage? Is it a positive voltage from the battery or a negative voltage? Since you know what to do with batteries, look at your notes and tell me, should it be positive or negative? Positive, positive, yes, positive, why? Because I'm moving this way, right? So my traverse direction is this. And the last terminal I'm going to pass is a positive terminal. That is why it is positive. Plus Vs. Okay, now resistor one. Can you tell me the term that you get for resistor one? 
what is the voltage across resistor one? So I got the answer very good. Any more answers? So it is a drop, right? We know when the current and the direction, traverse direction are the same, it's a voltage drop. So they are the same, right? I'm going this way and current is also this way. Negative IR, IR1. What about the second resistor? Same thing, right? They are, it, the current is this way, it's going this way, and I'm also going this way. So the directions are the same, therefore it is also drop IR2. So I covered all the elements in the loop, right? So I only have three elements. So the elements are done. So according to the curse of flow, this should be equal to zero. So it's easy, right? Okay, so this is an easy example. Now let's go uh, to the actual worksheet. So shall I move? You all are okay with this, right? Any questions? Yes, you are okay. That's good. So here are two conceptual problems. You all know the answers, but anyway, give me the answers. Okay, A, B, A, B. Okay. Maybe your answers are correct. Kirchhoff loop rule means voltage rule, right? Voltage is based on potential, potential energy. So it is energy. Junction rule is the current rule. Current is associated with charge. Therefore, it is conservation of charge. So here is... The pro here is a problem. So this is also a very simple problem, but they haven't marked the current, right? They haven't marked the current. So I want you to choose the current any way you like. Okay, if you choose the correct direction, you will get a positive value. If you choose the negative wrong direction, you will get a negative value. So any the either direction is fine. So you can, I'll give you the freedom to choose whichever direction you like and apply Kirchhoff law. So here Kirchhoff voltage law, right? No junctions, only a loop. Do it and tell me the answer. So for this problem, uh, I will do both ways. Okay, because I want you to uh, compare your answers. So here, let's say you chose your current like this. So I will do both ways, okay? If you chose your current like this, it would uh, it would be very wise to you uh, choose your traverse direction or the loop in the same direction as your current. Usually that is what we do, right? Okay, so if you did this, this will be your answer. So you can start from any anywhere you like, but I like to start with the bigger uh, uh, battery. So that is what I like, but you can start from anywhere you like in the circuit. So I'd like to start from here. So from this battery, since I'm moving this way, the last terminal that I pass is the positive terminal of the battery, right? So it is plus 12. So from this resistor, my current and the direction I traverse are the same. So I get a voltage drop. Current times the resistance 
R1 is 6 ohms. So here, the next circuit element is this battery. So I'm moving this way. The last terminal that I pass is the negative terminal. Okay, so I get a negative six from this battery. So now my last circuit element is R2. The direction I move and the current are in the same direction. Therefore, it is a voltage drop. Negative I times R2. R2 is 12 ohms. According to the curse of law, this is equal to zero. So 12 minus 6 is 6 minus 18i. So your i will be 6 over 18, 0 0.33 amperes. That means since I got get a positive value here, that means the direction of current is correct. We have chosen the uh, correct direction anyway. But let's do the other way. But if you chose the other way, so I'm going to redraw the circuit. Mm. This is the circuit. This is 12 ohms. This is 6 ohms. This is 12 volt, volt, uh, volts. This is 6 volts. So you just have to do one of the methods. I'm just going to do both. Uh, okay. So let's assume the current is going the other way. This way, right? So if you thought that the current is going this way, you should have selected your loop this way. Even if you choose the loop the other way, your answer will be correct. So I'm going to choose this way because I like to do it like that. Okay, so let's start um, with some battery. So which battery should I start? So any battery is fine. You can start with this or this. So let's, let me start with this because this will give me a positive value. So when so I'm traversing this way, right? That means this side is the last side I pass, last terminal, it is a positive terminal, plus six. And here through this resistor, my current and the direction I traverse are the same. So it is a voltage drop. I times 6, negative I times 6. Then I pass this battery. The last terminal I pass is the negative terminal. So it is negative 12. So this is my last circuit element. My current and the direction I traverse are the same. So it is a voltage drop. So here I get negative 6, uh, negative 18i. So when we solve this, uh, we get negative 6 over 18, negative 0 0.33 amps. So both ways gives you the same answer, right? So what this answer says is, uh, my I, since I have selected counterclockwise direction, charge is flowing in the counterclockwise direction, counterclockwise. So here, since I have chosen clockwise direction, I got a negative value. That means charge is actually flowing in the counterclockwise, right? So whichever the direction you choose, you will get the correct answer. Okay, both the answers are correct. So are you okay with this? Yes. Okay. 
So the answer to the question in the chat is yes. So the current flows from higher battery to the lower, yes, because it was a simple battery. It was easy to figure it out. But here we have a, a weird one. We have batteries which are connected in a weird way. So let's do this problem together. The reason I want to do this together is because uh, I want all of us to do the same way because it's easy to troubleshoot if we get anything wrong, if we have done in, it in the same way. So this problem doesn't have any currents marked, right? So we have to mark the currents just like the previous one. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to mark some currents. So since this is the big battery, nine volts, I'm going to assume current I1 comes through it and part of it will go through I2, resistor I R2, and I'm going to call it I2. And the current which goes to this circuit, this part is I3. Okay, so this is I3, I2, and I1 is like this, right? I1. So I have marked it. So I'm going to ask you different things and you all are going to give me the answers. As the first step, apply junction rule. The current rule, the junction rule. To any of the junctions, because we know both the junctions are the same, right? So apply maybe to this junction and tell me the equation you get. So I1 is coming towards the junction. So it is positive. I2 and I3 are leaving the junction. Okay. So we are good with that. So in the problem, they are asking us to calculate the three I's, right? So we have three different currents. So we have three unknowns. I1, I2, and I3 are the three unknowns. So how many equations do we need to solve three unknowns? If you listen to the lecture carefully, you would know. Three, so I'm getting the answers. So if we have three unknowns, we need three equations. If we have two unknowns, we need two equations. So the number of equations we need is exactly same as the number of unknowns. Okay, three unknowns means three equations. So we have one equation from the junction rule. Now we need two more equations. So for that, we are going to apply the Kirchhoff uh, voltage law or the loop rule. Now I want you to look at this diagram, circuit diagram carefully and tell me how many loops are there in the diagram. We just need two, but we just need two equations. How many loops are there? Oh, you are smart. So you are, you are saying three loops. So what are the three loops? So um, let me use a different color. Okay, so I'm going to use a highlighter. So this is one. Mm, so this is one loop, right? So I'm going to highlight one. Loop is any closed part of the circuit. So this part is a closed loop, right? Yes. So that is one loop. I'll use a different color to mark the next loop. So this part, this one is also another loop in the circuit. So we have two loops. What is the last loop? Last loop is the big one. This is also a loop, right? This whole thing 
if we just take the outer outer loop without uh, i2 and r2 without i2 and r2 this is also loop right big big one so there are three loops you can select uh, two of those loops so we just need two two of those right so let's select yes it is easier to do the small ones it depends on the problem but in this one it's easier to do the small one so let's select this loop let's say this is my loop number one and this is my loop number two the small ones okay let's select the small ones and for this one for loop one since all the currents are in the counterclockwise direction let's consider our loop to be in the counterclockwise direction for the second loop half of our current currents are counterclockwise and the other half is clockwise right and you see it i2 is going this way and i3 is going this way so you can choose either direction so let's let's choose this direction let's choose let's choose the counterclockwise direction so let's choose this way okay so for both let's use counterclockwise and tell me the equation you get for loop one and tell me the equation you get for loop two So which loop to choose will depend on the problem. So if you choose just two, any loop, any two loops, it will give you the answer. But you have you have you have the freedom to choose which which loop you are going to choose. Okay. Sometimes, like in this problem, these two loops are will give you the answer very quickly. For loop one so for loop one i'm going to start with the uh, battery so i'm going this way so let me draw it nicely so this is my loop one so this is a part of the circuit i2 is this way i1 is this way this is 22 ohms this is 9 volts uh, 18 ohms and i'm moving in the counterclockwise direction so from the battery since i'm passing the positive terminal i'm moving this way right so i'm passing the positive terminal so I get plus nine from the battery. Then I go through the 18 ohms resistor. My current and the direction I move are the same. So it's a voltage drop. 18 times I2. At last I go through this resistor. Here the current and the resistor, uh, current and the direction I move are the same again a voltage drop so 22 times i1 okay so you all have got the correct answer for that so now i'm going to do loop 3 so that is the different one right so let's do it very carefully so i purposely made this loop harder I mark the current just to make it hard because in exams we don't know which directions they will mark the currents, right? We should be ready to do anything. So this is 6 volts. This is 18 ohms. Uh, current I3 is going through this. 
current I2 is flowing to, through this. And I'm going to travel in the counterclockwise direction. So from the battery, I'm passing the positive terminal at last, right? The last terminal I pass is the positive one. So it is plus six. But here, through the resistor, current and the direction I move are opposite. See, current moves this way and I move this way. They are opposite. So it is a voltage lift, right? So it is plus IR, plus I2 times 18. So when we solve this for I2, we get a negative 6 divided by 18, negative 0 0.33 amperes. That means the direction of current I2 is not really this way, not towards right, it is actually towards left. So we got this answer for I2. Now we can solve the rest, right? So we can use the first equation to solve for I1 because we know the value of I2. So in this equation, we have to plug negative 0 0.33 for uh, I2 and then we will get I1. So let's do it. So plus 9 minus 18 and my I2 is negative 0 0.33. So we have to make sure we plug the values, plug the answers at as it is. Okay, if, we, if this is negative, we plug the negative value. We are not going to change it while doing the problem now. And negative 22. I1. So my I1 is I1 is 9 minus times minus becomes plus plus 6 divided by 22. So when you do that, you should get 0 0.68 amperes. It is a positive value, that means the direction that we have marked is correct. So to find the other one, we can use the junction rule, right? This equation. So from junction rule, we know I1 minus I2 minus I3 is 0. That means I3 is given by I1 minus I2. So I1 is 0 0.68 minus I2 is negative 0 0.33. So when you add this, you should get the uh, 1.01 amperes. Negative and negative becomes positive. So tell me when you are done with this, I will move to the uh, next problem. So here we have another circuit which is not parallel or in series or anything. So for these sort of problems, we have to definitely do search of law. So let's mark some currents. So since this is the big uh, battery, I'm going to mark I1 is coming through this. And at this point, I'm assuming uh, I2 will go through this and I3 will go through this. So I'm just assuming, okay, I don't know what's happening. 
So assuming that these are the currents, I want you to first write the junction rule. So always start with the junction rule. When if there are junctions, always start with the junction rule. Second, mm, since currents are in this direction, so let's say this is my loop one. Apply Kirchhoff in this direction, and for this loop, maybe apply Kirchhoff in this direction. So I just made your life hard. Yes, yeah, so I chose two hard directions so that we can learn from this. Okay. So I have marked the directions of the loops. I want you to apply Kirchhoff in these directions. So I1 is coming to the junction, so it is positive. I2 and I3 are leaving the junction. Therefore, they are negative. Okay. Now do now apply the curse of rule to loop number one and tell me the answers. Okay. So in loop number one, we are going in the same direction as current. And let's start with the battery. So we are moving this way and the last terminal I pass is the positive terminal. So it is plus 9. And the next circuit element is this resistor, 18 ohms. The direction I move and the current are the same, right? Same direction. So we know it is a voltage drop. Negative I2 times 18. So this will give you the value of the resist, uh, value of I2. I2 is 9 divided by 18, which is 0 0.5. Can you all give me the, uh, the equation for loop number 2? So let's start with the battery. So the last terminal I pass, so I'm going this way, right? The last terminal I pass is the negative terminal. So therefore the voltage from the battery is negative 6. And the next circuit element that I'm passing is this resistor, 12 ohms resistor. And my direction and the current are the same. Therefore, it is also a voltage drop. Negative I3 times 12. The third circuit element that I'm passing is 18 ohms resistor, but here my direction and the direction of current are opposite. Current is flowing this way and I am moving this way. So when the current and the loop are opposite. It is a positive voltage, I2 times 18. We can solve for I3 from this one, right? We know the value of I2. So negative 6, negative I3 times 12, and I2 is 0 0.5, 0.5 times 80. So your I3 will be negative 6 plus 0 0.5 times 18 is 9 divided by 12. Mm -hmm. Am I correct? Negative 6. Yes. So we get 3 over 12. Mm, 0.25 amps. 
So I2 is fine, I3 is fine. We just have to find I1, right? We can use the first equation, the junction rule. I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. So we just have to add, the, add this term. So we get 0.75 amperes. So it will be a little hard not to apply the first of law, but to solve. So let's come to an agreement with the currents. So, so I have two batteries. So let's assume I1 is this, I2 is this. Currents are coming from this and I3 is this. So I3 goes this way, I1, I2. So as the first step, I want you to quickly write the junction rule. Uh, junction rule. There are, there's only one junction in this problem, right? This, uh, sorry, two junctions, this one and this one. So we can only write one equation for the junctions. And how many loops are here? So we only need two loops, but how many loops are in this problem? So I got two. There are, so we will only need two. There are four. I see two. I see three. Three. Let's see. Okay. Maybe I'm also not seeing things. Huh? Uh, so this is one, right? So let's, so this is one loop, this small one. Yes, that is one. Uh, this is another one, this thing, the big loop, the big loop with one of these branches. Yes, so this is another loop. So we can have another loop, right? With the other branch. Oops. So this big one with this branch. So when I say the, this branch, it doesn't involve this one, the green and the yellow. So it doesn't involve this branch. Okay. So there are three loops. So let's use we just need two because we only have three unknowns, right? So let's use uh, these two loops to do the problem. So I, uh, yes, so your answer, uh, uh, we can even have a fourth loop if we take the REQ and make another loop. Yes, that is also possible. But if we take the problem as it is, uh, we have three loops. We can choose two of them to do the problem. So let's assume that this is the first loop, the green one. And let's assume my second loop is the blue one. So let's move this way in loop one. In loop one, let's move counterclockwise. And in the second loop, everything is counterclockwise, right? So let's move counterclockwise in loop two. So I want you to do this, do loop one as soon as possible and tell me the answer. Junction rule, loop one and loop two. So the junction rule is, if I'm getting answers, I will write it with you. I1 and I2 are coming. I3 is leaving. What is What do you get for loop one? So I will start loop one. 
So from the first, first battery, I get plus three. From the resistor, small resistor, current and the loop are in the same direction. Therefore, I get a negative. It is I2 times simple R. And from this one, the direction I go and the current are opposite, right? So I get a positive I1R. And from the battery, I get a negative, right? Because my the second terminal is negative. So all of you have got the correct answer for loop one. So let me do loop two quickly. So for loop two, it is this big loop. Uh, let's start with the battery. It is plus two because the second terminal is positive. Then I have this resistor current and the direction is the same. Therefore, I1 simple R. And then I get the big resistor. It is also negative, negative. Uh, I3 times capital R or 4 ohms. That's all, right? So these are my three equations and we need to solve it. So how can we solve it? So that is the hard part. So we applying Kirchhoff is not hard, right? Now solving these three is the hard. So how do we solve three simultaneous equations? Well, how can you do it? You know how to solve two, right? We are all very familiar with solving two, two simultaneous equations. So what we usually do, what we can do is, um, we can convert. Yeah, so you, I got one answer. Solve one current with respect to the others. Yes, you can do it. Yeah, so your answers are correct. So use one of the equations. Okay, use this one, this one, or this one. Let's say we are choosing this equation. We can write I1 in terms of R3 and plug it in this equation. So what we need is we need two equations with only two variables. So I need two equations with just I1 and I2. So what we can we can do is this one has only I1 and I2, right? This equation is fine. We can use this manipulate 1 and 3 to get rid of R3. So I can make I3, find I3 from this and plug it in this. Then I will get the equation with just I1 and I2, right? Then I can solve the two. So the time is up. So I have solved uh, in the answers that I have uploaded. Okay. So you don't have to solve the same way. So try to solve the simultaneous equation. It's good to practice the, practice this. Okay. So I will see you on Wednesday.